let us consider how to interpret or how to use these formulas in interpreting some other formulas. Okay. So, suppose I take one example. P x y. Okay, so I have quantification over y. Now consider this formula. Here, suppose I want to interpret it in the domain of natural numbers. Okay, suppose we have natural numbers where we want to interpret it. Now, while interpreting, so first thing we have to do is think of this p as the predicate which is a binary predicate as some binary predicate or binary relation over the natural numbers. Right? So, this p is now mapped to in some way uh, some binary predicate right? or binary relation. So, let us take less than. So, it is less than which has meaning in the set of natural numbers. We will formalize all these things. But now let us look at it informally. How does it look? Now then, what is the next step? If you translate this sentence, it will look like uh, for each y, x is less than y. Okay, so that y will be varying over natural numbers now. When you say for each y, you have only universe as natural numbers, nothing else. So for every natural number, the sentence will be coming like for every natural number, x is less than y. Okay. Now, what about this x? Because this is not a sentence, we are not able to say whether this sentence is true or false in natural numbers. Okay. To make it simpler, let us take p 0 x. Okay. So, 0 is not in the first order language, we have to interpret it somehow. So, we cannot say 0 p 0 x we will say for example, p c x. Now, what do we do? This constant c should be associated with our 0. Okay. So, now the sentence will be 0 is less than x. Now, is it a sentence? That will be its translation in the interpretation 0 is less than x. Now, x is just a named gap, it is a variable. Now, of course, it is a named gap in the set of natural numbers it can take some value from the natural numbers. Okay, even in that case, how do you say 0 less than x? x is a natural number. It is not a sentence also. If you say for each x, well it is a sentence. If you say there is x, then it is also a sentence. Okay. But as it is, it is not a sentence. So, now what is to be done? Either you have to take one of these two or devise some other methods. So, if you take any one of these two, it does not look how to justify it, why for each x and why not for there is x or otherwise. So, what we do is we take a medium uh, middle path, we say this x variable itself is associated with some number, then that also becomes a sentence that is another way of looking at it. Okay. It will give rise to some problems, what we will see what the problems are. So, suppose I associate this x to 1. Fine. Now, I can read the sentence, it will look like 0 is less than 1, Fine. which is a sentence in natural numbers. Had I associated x to 0, that is again a sentence, 0 is less than 0, it may be false, does not matter, it is a sentence. Okay. So, this is what we are planning to do, not only associate the predicates, but associate the variables and associate the constants. So, that we will get some sentence in our interpretation or domain of interpretation. Now, if you associate variables with this, now go back here. How do you write for every y p x y or say from this sentence for each x p c x. Now, you say x has been associated with 1, c has been associated with 0. So, this we can read as 0 less than 1. Now, then what is for each x? there is problem again. Okay. Now, the thing is how to associate this and also interpret for each x p c x that is our problem now. Is it clear? We want to associate the variables fine, 
but then we also want to interpret for each x p c x. Okay. Now, what we do here is this association x is to 1. Now, if you look at this sentence which is interpreted in natural numbers, it will be an infinite number of sentences. Just look at the meaning of for each x x as we understand. So, this says for every natural number 0 is less than that number. Okay. So, that means, we have all these sentences 0 less than 0, 0 less than 1, 0 less than 2. So, all these sentences are there. If all of them are true, this sentence will be true, otherwise not. That is what it says. Fine. But if x has already been associated with 1, how to bring this other one 0 less than 2? What we do is 0 less than 1 we are able to get because x has become associated with 1. Okay. Now, when you come to for each x p c x, somehow you have to free that association x to 1 and consider again association x to 0 or x to 2 and so on. Fine. Suppose you say this association is L, Fine. we have L of x equal to 1. Now, what we do from this assignment itself, we construct another assignment where x is related to say 0. Right, which will be just like L, but fixing x to 0. Is it clear what we are doing? Suppose you come to this formula for each y p x y. Right? Now, this says for each y for each natural number y x is less than y. Right? Now, what happens? We want to associate x with something, y with something. Right. So, suppose we associate x to by this l to 1 and y to some 0. Now, without this for each y, you will read it as 1 is less than 0. Right. But when you come to for each y p x y, you will be considering again infinite number of sentences 1 is less than 0, 0 is less than 0, then sorry 1 is less than uh, 1, then 1 is less than 2, 1 is less than 3 and so on. All these have to be brought somehow, right? not only 1 is less than 0, is it okay? because we want for each y. So, what we do here is we take construct L y 0 let us say, y is already fixed to 0. So, L y 0 will be equal to L itself, there is no change. But if you take L y 1, this will be equal to different from L. So, how to specify this map? We will say this takes y to 1, that is the only fixing we are doing. So, this notation says y is fixed to 1. Okay. Is it clear this fixing? But what about x? See x is free here, so x was already associated to 0 or 1, x is already associated to 1, we are not worried about that, we are only worried about how to take care of this for each y. Fine. So, in L we have 1, where x is 1 and y is 0, in L y 1, y fixed to 1, we will say x is associated to 1 as it is, as in L but y is changing to 1. right? So, that means, these are some new assignments or new valuations, which will fix this variable to the subscripted one. right? We can give some other notation, let us say L x fixed to d is equal to L of y, if x is not equal to y and it is d, if x equal to y. Okay. So, this is evaluated at y. Is it clear? If you want you can write the other way, y is not equal to x, because at y you are verifying. Right? Let us write that way, y not equal to x and y equal to x. Fine. So, what do we say here? 
f 1 for each y p x y is coming. Now, we will transfer our responsibility to these evaluations. We will say that for each d a natural number here, what will happen with these assignments or new valuations, the corresponding sentence should be true in natural numbers. Okay. So, for each natural number is coming now, it is making that x redundant, whatever that y was assigned earlier by L that becomes redundant for each y takes over. Is the mechanism clear? Hmm? So, what we what we say is that if we take L and then consider L x to d, we say for each x p x y is true in our interpretation. if for each d in the set of natural numbers, okay, we say uh, the sentence interpreted by our interpretation with this new valuations L x fixed to d is true. In fact, it is not the sentence, there will be many sentences each d you are taking right in that sense, but you are writing each. So, all those sentences you obtain by assigning this new variable x, I have changed this y to x here, huh? let us go for this x. So, for each x p x y will be taken as true in that domain, when you just vary over that assignment L x to d and then say for each d in the natural numbers with this new valuations, the corresponding sentence will become true. Okay. Hmm. So, what it says is that L of y is kept as it is. Suppose, L of y is already fixed, it is fixed with the same ones, three variables are fixed already some way. Then what about the bound ones? If it is for each x, we will say that for each natural number d, something should be satisfied, but what should be satisfied? L of that, right? whatever we assign to get a sentence. So, that is taken care by here, because L y is the same as earlier. Okay? So, in fact, we are coming to many things now, so many things are involved. First, we have one interpretation. In the interpretation, there should be one non empty set like your natural number here. Then, we should tell how these predicates are mapped to relations, right. So, let us say there is a map phi, which tells which predicate is becoming which relation in our interpretation. Okay. Then, there will be constants, for example, c here, okay. c becomes associated to 0. And in general, there can be function symbols, not only constants, because terms can be involved. Okay. So, we will also say that the same mapping phi associates function symbols to real functions on the domain. Okay. So, functions and predicates they are defined now. Now, coming to the variables, what we do? We take one valuation L, which assigns one variable to a particular element in the domain. Right. So, if it is a free variable, it goes well we just interpret them as the elements in the domain. If it is bound, then what we do? We change this valuation L, which fixes variables to elements. By changing, we get new valuations. And now, we say for all those new valuations, the corresponding sentence will be true. Then, it is for each. When it is there is x, you say at least one of those will be true. Okay? Is it clear informally? We will come to formal semantics now. So, what we do in the formal semantics, first we have to start with a pair having a non empty domain D and one map phi, which associates predicates and function symbols to predicates and functions in the domain itself. Okay. So, an interpretation say i is a pair which is write as D phi 
where d is a non empty set. Okay, and this phi associates predicates and function symbols to relations and so these function symbols will take the general view instead of telling functions we will take any partial function also right and partial functions on d so how does it associate we have to really give the details huh? so the details let's give as in the following so first thing is we have to write for the predicates then for the function symbols and so on all those things we have to specify okay fine so a predicate can be zero ary predicate to begin with so zero ary predicates are propositions or you may say atomic propositions okay then there what should happen for the zero ary predicates there are already propositions so they when translated in the interpretation will give you simply sentences directly they will not give just a relation they are just sentences because no argument is required to make them sentences that's why they are zero ary if it is some unary then one argument is there so one objective field it becomes a sentence in the interpretation right so we don't have to say anything for them we'll take care of that later they can be true or false they are sentences fine now you are giving just the association of this phi how this phi associates things fine so first thing is you have phi of the equality symbol so phi of the equality symbol will be interpreted as identity itself equal to the same as it's a binary relation so when you say x equal to y it will be interpreted as x equal to y or x is same as y in the domain fine so this is the equality or identity relation okay then if it is not equal to symbol then how to do so let us say uh, p is nre relation or nre predicate in that case we will say phi p is one nre relation right so nre relation means it should be a subset of d to the power n if it is binary relation it is a subset of d cross d right so unary it is a subset itself like x is prime so this set of all prime numbers inside n that's a subset of n okay if it is ternary it say it is a subset of d cross d cross d and so on so in general we'll say if p is nary phi of p is a subset of d to the power n fine is it clear if you want to include another that is the trivial thing phi of p where p is zero ary you say it is just a proposition just a sentence in the natural numbers or in your domain now right any d you started with any non empty set d so it it speaks something about objects in d okay that also you can include then let's come to function symbols so f is a function symbol so it is zero ary then what should we do it's a constant so name something like socrates so it should have been translated back as some s s is a zero ary function symbol now that s should be associated to socrates or plato somebody you have to associate or in the natural numbers we may say 5 100 0 something so that means this will give you that phi that phi of f should be an element in d itself is that clear so we say phi of f is an element in d now if it is nary
then it should be a function of n arguments may be partial right it can be a partial function but of n arguments arguments should be same so you say that phi of f is a function from d to the power n to d is a partial function from d to the power n to d see we have started with the interpretation i which is having two components the first component is a non empty set just a non empty set nothing else is there there can be some structures which will be useful later right at this moment we are taking it as a non empty set then there is one map so this map associates predicates and function symbols to concrete relations and partial functions on the domain d right the way we have done there if p is binary we are taking let us say it is associated with the relation of less than which is also binary arity should be preserved you cannot write p of something and then turn it between something right that is not possible you cannot interpret the sentence so you are keeping that arity same if p is binary we say it is d to the power n similarly function symbol binary it will become a partial function of n arguments okay but once you put in those n arguments you should get a concrete element from d itself because there are the definite descriptions okay the description object finally so you say father of mother of sister of so and so that gives you one so and so later one person right it is not from d to the power n to d square to d itself is it clear then what we need is assignment of the variables okay that l l type of thing so what do we say we define a valuation under this interpretation i because valuation will take the constants or anything variables let us say to elements in the domain fine so that d is important also so we say that a valuation under i or we write as l write as say l you can give any notation later so such a valuation should give variables to elements right suppose you have variables to elements now you say uh, say x is a variable which has been given to rajiv gandhi right now f is a function which is father of now f of x will be what interpreted as what Firoz Khan, huh? it should be father of Rajiv Gandhi. Is that clear? Suppose you have x, which has been associated to Rajiv, Rajiv Gandhi, let us say, and f is associated to by phi, father of. Then f of x, we require this to be associated with father of Rajiv Gandhi, right? it should happen like this so that means your association we should be extend it to terms not only remain as variables fine because all the terms are only definite descriptions they should also point out some persons in the domain some objects in the domain d right so we should be able to extend this that's what we are going to define that this is one these valuations are some mechanisms or maps which associate every term to elements in the domain d but then it is not arbitrary it has to take care of this so we'll be defining it as for variables first and then extending it to terms right so this evaluation under i associates each term to an object in d and these are first defined for variables and then extended to terms satisfying 
now what should it satisfy this is our requirement we need this okay suppose i write uh, l of x as rajiv l of x equal to rajiv okay now this f is associated to father of by what map it's not l by phi right so we'll write phi of f equal to father of now what we should get is l of this should be equal to father of rajiv right so that means l of f of x should be equal to phi f of l x is that right father of rajiv so phi f of l x phi of f is already a function in the domain d so that of an element makes sense okay so this is what we are going to say so it should satisfy uh, before that before that you have the function symbols which are constants phi of c is 0 right that is already there now we should also have l of c as 0 so they should agree there on the constants first to begin with so you should write l of c is equal to phi of c right for constant c or zero ary functions f zero ary functions c right then for the variables we are telling variables already l is defined l of x is one object in the domain d now you have to go for the terms so say t1 to tn are already terms fine now you say l of f of t1 to tn now instead of one variable x only i am taking many variables that is the difference so this should be equal to phi f of l should go inside right phi f of l of x so it should be l of t1 l of tn it's okay so if you have already extended l to t1 to tn we know l of t1 to tn so it is a recursive definition it will start from the constants terms and for the variables already we know l of x so these are the basis cases then in the inductive case if you know already for variables and constants you can extend it by taking any function there right so that defines how l is extended for taking care of the terms is it clear this formulation is very important slowly we will realize where it will come so now you see we have started with one interpretation having two components one non empty set and one association or a map which takes predicates and function symbols to relations and partial functions right then we have brought up this l evaluation right we have three components now let's give it a name we will say that i l is equal to i phi and l is a state under the interpretation i we will refer to it as a state under the interpretation i so it is called a state because of the language from the programs suppose in a program you have many variables there is an open variable it has it has a free variable so you say x is initialized to 0 once you say x is initialized to 0 you get one state of the program right that's the language we use in the programs so let's continue with that now variable has been assigned to a value it's a state similarly all the terms because of the definition now you have to say under these states how the formulas are satisfied or not satisfied right not under the interpretation we'll talk about the states now in this state something is satisfied in this state it is not satisfied okay finally we will come to interpretation later slowly so now you have to define how a state satisfies a formula okay so there we will say if it is any state i l it always satisfies top 
we just declare the stop has to be satisfied anyway of that should be equal to 1. Hmm? So, we say I L satisfy stop then we say no state will satisfy bottom. So, we say I L falsifies bottom always whatever state it may be it is not unsatisfiable right. Then we are really recursively defining it. So, first these two steps are easy to see what is happening then you have to go for where see this is also a recursive definition. So, that means there should not be any connectives no quantifiers that will be the basis case right. So, it is something like p of something how to interpret that p of something ok this is what we want. But p means it can have many cases like a 0 array or it is equal to equality relation or it is any NRE relation right. So, these three special cases we have to define. So, let us write uh, if p is 0 array predicate then there is no argument there it is a proposition. So, we just define either I L satisfies this or I L does not satisfy this it is a sentence already a sentence nothing else there ok. So, which otherwise you can write I L of p equal to 0 or I L of p equal to 1 fine that also you can write ok. Let us stick to one notation I L satisfies p or you may say there or I L falsifies it. fine. Next we will be having identity relation p may be equal to that identity relation web equal. So, there we will write if or we can directly write I L satisfies S equal to T ok. If what happens? this term is a definite description this is also definite description is that ok. So, then I will say this definite expression is equal to this definite expression in my interpretation in my domain D ok. Now, how do I say say father of Rajiv is equal to father of Sanjay right how do I say there are two terms now father of Rajiv father of Sanjay. So, it refers to the same person that is what I have to say ok. Now, in formal notation how do we say S has already been mapped to somewhere by whom L right. So, L of S must be equal to L of T that is all. So, this happens if L of S is equal to L of T. that is the way we are going to interpret this equality relation same as identity. Hmm. No other way we are going to interpret it. So, we are fixing it here. Next if p is any NRE relation. So, p is NRE in that case what happens you will have p of t 1 to t n that will be appearing. So, if p of t 1 to t n now we will say that T 1 has already been assigned to L of T 1, T 2 to L of T 2, T n to L of T n. There are elements in the domain D. Now, P is a relation there which is NRE relation. So, we will say that this tuple of numbers or tuple of objects L of T 1 to L of T n if they are so related as whatever P has been assigned to right. So, we will say that I L satisfies P of T 1 to T n if L of T 1 to L of T n belongs to phi of P is that ok because phi of P is the NRE relation huh? here it is the NRE relation it is a subset of d to the power n. So, L of t 1 belongs to d 
L of t n also belongs to d, that is an n tuple, which is an element of d to the power n. If that belongs to phi of p, then yes, otherwise not. Okay. So these are some of the basis cases. What about the other steps? We should discuss for connectives and for the quantifiers. Okay. So next we go. Let us say not. So I L satisfies not X if easy propositional. If I L does not satisfy X, if I L falsifies X. So, this is a definition all these ifs are really if and only ifs. Okay? So, we do not write I f f unnecessarily, this is definition. So, there what is the next one? All the connectives we have to decide now. So, say I l satisfies let us not be first see x and y if there should be a bracket here. So, if what happens? I L satisfies X and also I L satisfies Y. If both of them hold, next it satisfies X or Y if at least one of I L satisfies X. I L satisfies Y at least one of these holds, right. Next I L satisfies say X R O Y if at least one of I L falsifies X holds or this one holds satisfies Y. Now, your experience no? x implies y is equivalent to not x or y. So, we just write the definition. Next, I L satisfies x by conditional y if or both we want, you want the other way. Okay. If you can write two ways. Huh? One is taking from this clue, another is from the uh, interpretation itself. Let us write the interpretation if either both I L satisfies X, I L satisfies Y hold, or both I L does not satisfy or falsifies X and I L falsifies Y holds. Okay. Both are of the same truth value, that is what it says. Till now it looks like propositional. Now is the crucial thing, how do we take care of the quantifiers? Okay. So, we will be using the fixed to some element. Huh? So, we say that I L satisfies for each x, x if for each element d in the domain i l x fixed to d satisfies x. Okay. Just take care here, suppose you have x equal to p x just try to see what we are doing. Then what we are doing? You replace x that d, because x is already fixed to d, whatever other variables we are not worried, they are same as what l assigns. Okay? Now, once you fix x to d, it becomes p of d in some sense, not exactly p of d, right? it becomes d belongs to phi of p. Okay? Fine, so p d let us say. Now, here we say for each d in d, p d holds. Therefore, for each x p x holds. Okay? Is it clear? Just to make it intuitively what we are doing. Then next one should be clear then. 
you can formulate it yourself. Huh? Yeah, so I L satisfies there is x x f for at least 1 d in d, we will write as some d. Okay. What happens? I L where x fixed to d satisfies x. Fine. So, here we have used the notation that L x fixed to d of any y is equal to L of uh, is equal to d if y equal to x and it is L of y if y is not equal to x. Fine. So, that means the state I L in that if you evaluate one universal quantifier and a formula, okay, then you have to consider all states under the same interpretation I, right? all those states where x becomes fixed, all the others are as in L. So, that now transfers the responsibility of each element in the domain to all valuations. Right, all possible states that you can get from this by varying this x to d. Okay, so once this happens, then you say that for each x x is satisfied in that state. Let's see an example. So if you try to consciously remember this, it's difficult to remember. Huh? So unconsciously remember it. That's why. Just like you have learnt your languages naturally without knowing what the words are, how many words I am learning every day. Hmm? So, forget it, then unconsciously you will be learning it, just try using it. Okay, let us see how to proceed. Suppose I consider a formula of this form P uh, x y and another let us say P c f of c. Okay. Let us take one interpretation i, which is having domain as natural numbers and some association phi, some map. We will definitely tell what this map is. Say phi of p is uh, less than or equal to, okay. and we need phi of f also. So, phi of f is say successor function. Okay. To n it will give you n plus 1. Now, you need also c. So, let us say phi of c is 5. Okay. then this formula can be interpreted as it is, nothing else is required, no L is required here, because L will agree with phi anyway by definition, but for P x y you need something else, say L, you have to define what is L of x, what is L of y. So, let us write L of x equal to 2 and L of y equal to 4, something you are fixing arbitrarily. Now then, with the formal semantics, how do we proceed? We have the state I L now. In that state I L, we are going to consider what is happening. So, let us say I L satisfies P C F C. If, so here we can write, both the sides may not be same, huh? definition meaning is I F F. Yeah. So, it is not C comma F of C. Yeah, let us go slowly. So, this will tell us that uh, C is related to some element by phi and then phi of f of C, it is not phi of f of C, it is L, because each definite description will go to some element 
by the valuation L, phi of f will come, not phi of f of c. Is that okay? So the notation should be L here. Clear? Similarly, here you should have taken L also. It is not phi of c, though they are same. Let's write it, L of c. So this must belong to phi of p. Phi of p is the relation. Okay. So this happens if and only if now L and phi will be same, agreeing on c. So you can write phi of c here itself. So phi of c, then L of phi of c is phi of f of L of c. Okay. So this belongs to phi of p. We are just rewriting without thinking. One more bracket, huh? Is it? Oh. Okay. So this happens when phi of c is five, and phi of f is successor function. So successor of phi of c, right, belongs to the relation less than or equal to. So which means. Or we don't have six, huh? If you don't use, it doesn't matter. That's all it says. Which is true. Therefore, I L satisfies P C F C. Okay. So this is a crucial thing. Last step. Hence. It is crucial because our assumption is that in every domain there is some inner mechanism of truth, right? Which determines whether a given sentence there is true or false. We do not know that. The formal semantics doesn't give that. It gives only how to translate from the formulas to sentences in a given domain. That's all it gives. Then finally, the truth in that domain will decide it. Suppose you get one formula, which will give to one conjecture after the translation, right? Twin prime conjecture or Goldbach's conjecture, something it will give. Now you can't decide there whether it is true or false. But all that you know, semantics only tells that it is either true or false. That's all. There it stops, right? So such cases you cannot really find out whether that is satisfiable or it is not satisfiable. Okay? Now, looking informally, these these are the formal steps. This is how we have to proceed. Now, looking informally, c is interpreted as five, f of c is interpreted as five plus one, p is less than or equal to so five is less than or equal to five plus. That's all. Hmm. But then, really to go through it, we have to go through these steps. It's a recursive definition. Okay. What about the other formula, p x y? So similarly, you say I L of satisfies. P x y, if and only if x goes to L x by two, so you will write L of x, comma L of y. Okay, belongs to less than or equal to. This is how it will be translated. Phi of p, which is less than or equal to. Then this will write L of x is two, huh? Two. Less than or equal to four, which is true in n. Therefore, it's correct. That's how we'll be proceeding. Hmm? So we'll take some more examples later. 